So welcome back everybody. We continue in the chapter 50. We're studying the second class on this chapter. <clears throat> and it is a very different type of Patek. Dr. Ev himself begins the Patek that everything we spoke about till now is one level of Ava. All the different types of expressions of love of Yivtech to Hashem, but this is a different type of level of love completely. So Dr. Ev testifies uh, attests to this that it is unique because you're dealing with something totally out of the ordinary. So generally as we usually uh, we begin the class just to make the connecting points uh, from the previous class to this we try not to elaborate it's just because it's a click away you can see this class is, this previous class as well as all the other classes uh, from the very beginning of Tanya on the TanyaOnline.com TanyaOnline, one word, dot com um, The good thing about it is simply that it's set up in a way that it's easy to follow where there is a separate scroll bar for the text and as well easy to access all the previous classes very indicative, clearly a whole uh, scroll bar on the left of the site and uh, every class is in the same fashion once you click it, it comes up in the same fashion again as such easy to follow. So you can see it again, a click away of this very beginning of, uh, this is the second class we began last week, this very unique chapter. We pointed out also that unique number of known 50, which is not just random, as spoken about in the past, and very also easy to understand based on the information of this chapter that it's something unique again associated with the number 50 as we mentioned last week the nun sharibina and so on <clears throat> and uh, so basically the message of the Al-Tarebbe is that there is a certain type of love which is more compared to gold over silver and we understand that the difference of gold and silver the value of gold and silver is not just a quantitative value difference but rather a qualitative difference by far and so too, this expression of love is not just like more passionate and more exciting and so on, greater sensation, but it's a different quality type of love. And basically the message is, like till now we learned about the love of Yitu Hashem, that he wants to, he draws himself towards the Kosmo. I want to be part of this godly reality. And how do you, how do, you do that? Especially when we're coming from the chapter Mentes, um, where he, you know, he definitely draws that line from and eventually as it says see this, this is where which is a symbolic mitzvah and then which is this is all a result of the Yid's exp- expression of that I love you Hashem so much as such I want to become close to you I, I, my drive is towards you and I want to become close to you and how do I do that? because Hashem placed himself in Teira when you learn Teira you're really becoming you're connecting, you're sticking to Hashem you're connecting to Hashem at a very deep and intimate level it's not just like you're getting closer and you're literally connecting to Hashem in the most profound um, intimate manner and when it comes to mitzvahs it's also part of that type of intimate connection one way or another as it says Rebbe doesn't bring it in this previous chapter, but in, in, in overall the message in Tanya, the Alter Rebbe points out this, which is brought from Zayir. Again, it's, it's brought, brought in Kabbalah that Ramach Mitzvah says Ramach Yivarim de Malka. These are the two hundred, the two hundred forty-eight mitzvahs, are the two hundred forty-eight limbs of Hashem. So doing a mitzvah is like one's hugging, embracing a Kodesh Baruch Hu. Tate is even deeper than that because Tate is a Kodesh Baruch Hu, not only a limb. Again, you can cross-reference in a number of chapters in the past of Chav Gimel, for example, in Lamed Zayin, where you see this again, the the, the, the Tere being even a deeper connection, but yet al Tareva takes it uh, even further in in where he does, in, in the end of chapter 45, and he clearly says that Limit al Tere is true, an expression of true intimacy, again, we spoke then, and we spoke in the in Patek Memtes, Elaborated in Perikmem Tes because that's the message as well in Perikmem Memtes. The Iu Nateira, the the the, the uh, again he quotes this in the Shikin, which all is Dapkus Rucho Berucho, which is all terminologies and, exp- and expressions of intimacy, which that is the practice, that is what transpires when he learns Taita. So, and yet in the same token, the love is I want, I'm drawn to Kuzbah, I want to become close to Kuzbah, I want to I want to touch the divine, I want to be connected to the divine. 
but still there's one common thread between all these levels of Ava, despite the fervorous the fervor and despite the passion and despite that sensation uh, of, of, of love to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, there is somewhat, even subtly I want to become close to Hashem I want to cleave to Hashem, I'm drawn to Hashem it's like water, like in Alter Abim it says, this level is chesed, chesed associated with Maim Maim sticks and Maim uh, uh, it, it, it causes things to stick in my it flows my heart it flows to Hashem and like it's a uh, number of places brought this terminology of mind associated with, uh, with Avo clearly um, um, uh, a number of places brought this that does uh, that mind rather that mind is associated with Avo and my heart flows to Akash Baruch Hu, is driven to Akash Baruch Hu, and so on but the common thread between all these Ahavos is I desire to be part of a Kodesh Baruch Hu. that I want to be close to a Kodesh Baruch Hu. I want to cleave to a Kodesh Baruch Hu. I want to adhere to a Kodesh Baruch Hu. there's always that I want and therefore uh, or rather this is where this in, the message of this chapter and the style of this Ava illustrated in this chapter is not only again different than the previous expressions of Abba, but a very, very, a, a total, a total diametrically, um, a, a diametric difference between the two in a sense that there is, I want to cleave to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, while here is, I don't want to be anymore. I just want HaKadosh Baruch Hu and I want to become part of the godly reality and to the extent that I, not only I don't care, I'm, it's, it, it, I'm totally indifferent to the fact that that means the total rapture of my soul towards HaKadosh Baruch Hu in a way that the body will cease to exist and expire, totally expire. This Ava, which is dealing in this Pedic, this is where it's so distinct than the previous, all the previous Ava. This is where, I mean, in a number of areas, but this is the core difference between the two. While the others are, I want to become close to Akash Baruch here, I don't want anymore. I don't want nothing, and I don't want even to want. I just, I just want to be part of Akash Baruch Hu, and to lose myself and be completely subsumed into this God, the reality, what happened with me, <laughs> I don't even, it, it's not even that I don't care what happens with my body. I'm not caring, I'm not not caring. It's such a drive of the nefesh, a judge, it's such a, uh, uh, a powerful, potent expression of love of the nefesh with this type of ava associated with gvura, associated with bin again, just to get into this, where we're holding today, because again, you, to get the, the initial picture, one would need to listen or need to follow the previous class, which is again the first class on this chapter. But this is very basically the message, but that I'm ready to be consumed based on this bina law associated with gvura precise, precisely, bago bina gvura as opposed to chesed, chachma um, chesed, as we mentioned, the different ways that the spheres are counted, the spheres are presented, the, in this case, it's again, we spoke about this last week as well, then there, there's the Bago, which is that Bino, the dissecting and getting involved in the details, the nuances of the greatness and reality of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which causes the Nefesh literally to want to surge on high and become part of the on high. Not that I want to cleave to the on high, I want to connect to the on high with great even to the extent of Izdapkos Rucho Berucho, but there is Izdapkos Rucho Berucho, one spirit to another spirit. So I always maintain my spirit, and that spirit wants to cleave and to connect to the other spirit, while in this case, I don't want to have any more my spirit. I just want to be part of the divine, part of this reality. This is the, the, uh, the, the, the source, or this is the expression of this love, because the person has that elaborative, expanded understanding and appreciation of HaKadosh Baruch Hu based on that Bino 
this is what the Neshama aspires to, just to search on high and be completely consumed into the godly reality of the total exploration of the body and soul. Now, we need not to mention, and Atzev himself mentions this, it doesn't work all the, all the time when we learn a lot of chassidus or learn about the greatness of HaKadosh Baruch that we will reach that level. There are stipulations, there are conditions. Naturally, a person has to be on a level. He says clearly it has to be clean of, of sins, of sin in general, in particular those sins which are known to divide between a yilav if shemayim mentioned previously in Tanya as well, but he definitely alludes to this in this in this chapter as well. There has to be a certain purity of the keli of the person. And such a type of person will be able to identify or be able to experience this love. And similarly, when you speak about let's say uh, wood. For example, you have a damn piece of wood, you can get a fire turned on, but it's not, it doesn't shoot up. Again, and for that matter, he does ex- compare this love to a fiery coal, which the fire shoots up in a way that surges on high. Mm-hmm. And if you think about the, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the a piece of wood, which is wood generally very conducive to this what people use in order to create a fire, a bonfire, for example, this wood is this is the substance which is, is conducive to burn. And but nonetheless, for example, you have a piece of wood which is hard or it's more like a log not cut up or it's a bit damp. I mean the different in different cases which would bring out less of the wood or be less conducive to establish a great fire. But if for example you have twigs very dry twigs and you like the smallest fire the fire is definitely extremely catches and before you know it there's a great flame shooting surging upwards this is similarly the keli he does clearly mention later that the keli the body of the person has to be refined he has to be at a level there shouldn't be anything interfering with him and him uh, and, uh, and his creator which the only thing that interferes but divides it stands as a partition between man and his creator is it's a sin which divides the Yid and his creator, and someone has that partition standing in the way, what he's, it, 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 it's, it's unlikely that he will be able to experience this love. And therefore, the Altarim mentions a very clear, this all has to be, this makes so much sense. Someone just can say, oh, I understand this mimer, I understand this essay about godliness, and it's so gishmak, and it's so beautiful, and I can give it over even in a good shear as an example of what, what would, and therefore, I probably the next step I'm having this Kleisa Nefesh experience. Probably not. Somebody who has Gdimas Yiris Achet, he's on a level, he says clearly, and he definitely alludes to those sins which are also stands out greater, as known again, greater interferences between man and his creator, a thicker barrier, and so on. He says someone is clean from all that, and then he. Uh, and then, then there is a, a, a one experiences that bina, full, expansive bina experience in the course of this person. And again, time and again, and he thinks about it for real. Then it, it, it's possible, and it's maybe even likely that he would have that 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 yid would have that kleisa nefesh to akutzbar, that complete mm, pine. Not only pine that I want to be close, but kleisa nefesh means expiration of the body, expiring of the body. And the soul becoming part of the godly reality. Now, we did mention this last week, and also cross reference. There's no question, even though the Altar doesn't mention over here the Pedic Yutches and Yutes, mainly Yutes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you can definitely glean certain information about this very nature of this Ab from that Pedic, because what the Altar is saying in that Pedic that, in essence, the soul, every the soul of every person has that desire to become what the Nefesh Baruch and he compares it to fire, like the Pasuk compares it to fire, Neir Hashem Nishmas Adam. The reason why, and we mentioned this last week, we shouldn't really take the time, but Neir Hashem Nishmas Adam, the reason why, the, you look at a fire, everything in Elam Haza, in this, in this world, gravitates downwards, why does fire gravitate upwards or shoot upwards? So it says, based on the Rambam, that the shade of Eish is on high, and we spoke about this a little more detail last week, and therefore, the fire desires to become part of, to as- ascends to its shade. And the only thing that's holding to its source, the only thing that's holding it down is that wick or that match, whatever it is. And if that wouldn't exist, it would take a leaf. And if you ask the fire, you know, now you're at least some mitzias, you're an entity of fire. 
your sources up there. You could be, you could want to connect to your source, but at least don't you want to be held on to that wick or to that match and so on? Here you're at least a mitzias, you're something. But the fire would naturally, theoretically answer, I don't care, I don't want to be part of this but as a mitzias on my own. I don't want to be an entity on my own. I just want to leave this wick. I want to yank myself away from this wick. And I really, and that's the reason why it gravitates it. It shoots upwards because it wants to become part of its shayish. It wants to become part of its source. And when it beco- would become part of its source, what would it be? It would stand on the head of a separate, uh, a separate chamber with all the glory and uh, and uh, acknowledgement and identifying. Oh, you came up there and you are so special because you became part of the, uh, you have no other desire just to become part of your source. The opposite is true. That once the fire becomes, comes back into its shadow, it becomes nothing. It's nothing at all. Like it never existed. Which tells you how deep the passion of the fire is. That it rather not, in other words, to its source, that rather not exist than stay as a metzias and be held on to that wick. That's why it's jumping away from the wick. The kayach of the wick is that has the ability to contain it and to keep it down. But it on its own would rather not exist at all and just be part of the shadish, part of its source, and lose itself completely. In other words, lose its whole metzias. It wouldn't be considered anything. It would just be part of the grand picture. That's the Neir Hashem Mishmas Adam al says this is the inherent nature of every single yid. So what's so special about this yid? The answer is, yeah, the yid from the perspective of his soul. This is this is default. The problem is the yid enters into a body, into a nefshah, but nefshah kis never enters into a nefshah ha'am, an animal soul. And it enters into, into the body, and it finds itself elam hazeh. And unfortunately, the experience, especially someone who violated and transgressed, which causes again that interference, so to say, between him and his creator, and therefore to have that experience when you're two feet on the ground, that's what we're talking about over here. And that's why it's demanded different different conditions in order to reach this experience. But here he's focusing in the beginning of the the the, the, the of Tereb, like in the end of the day he says that, let's say parenthetically, he just says, well, make no mistake, you need that understandably a pure Kaylee, a pure container, in other words, there shouldn't be any interferences. But he in the but that's not the main focus. The main focus of the period, yes, it does exist. And this is where we left off. That this is the Bine law, the Gvuri Sal Yenis of Bine. It comes from again. This is the love of Krishna Eish. We'll start a little a little few lines earlier. Which is 140, the top of 140. Which is um, a third line. We read it, we read this, but just to get into it, get, get an easier flow. So we'll start from there. This is a love like a flame of a, a fiery flame coming from Gvuris Alienis the Bina, the supreme Gvuris of Bina, uh, the Bina Ila, the supreme Bina. Again, we explain this as well the connection of Gvura to Bina, the high Noshai day is Bainan as Bigdos in Sabaruchu through pondering the greatness of Akadish Baruchu, the infinity of Akadish Baruchu. Let's translate it, let's translate it. Um, accurately, Bigdula Saint Sab Baruch he ponders on the greatness of the infinite of uh, infinity of Akadish Baruch Hu. Blessed be He, the Kula Kamekelam Amshchshivi, Choshiv, that everything in the face of Akadish Baruch Hu is not is insignificant. But I'm just saying, do we have to say this uh, this holy Zbeinus over again? We spoke about it last week, but namely, you can see it, and it's important. It's important to understand because the Alter Rebbe. And Peri Gimel speaks about the mode of the Chochma Bina, of the Nefesh. In other words, what does the Chochma Bina and the Nefesh, the Kis, invest on a constant basis? Answer, because it's a godly Chochma, it's a godly Bina, as the Alter begins the third chapter in Tanya, that this Neshama is divided into ten, the ten, ten spheres. So that every one of the spheres, which is Chochma Bina Das, which is the three, three cognitive faculties, and then the six emotions, and the Malchus, and every one of them, by default, is invested in a godly pursuit. If it's Chachmo Bino, it intellectualizes in a lukus. Nothing else. Not interested in anything else for that matter, because it's only it, it's a part of a Kodesh Baruch What else is a Chachmo Bino, which is a Chelik of Kami Mal Mal, Mamash, thinking about intellectualizing? Obviously, only in a lukus. And then Das, and then the Midas. If there's Am of the Yiro within the, <clears throat> within the Nefesh, it's obviously... 
a a uh, a love to a Kodesh Baruch Hu, Yiro, reverence of a Kodesh Baruch Hu. It's all about a Lukus, God. And therefore, for that matter, this is the whole makeup of the third chapter. It doesn't even enter into the Kima Mitzvahs, which it begins uh, in the fourth chapter, the Levushim, the garments, which the garments are this, which implement Hashem Zaretzim. But the sensei or the 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 sensation of the Neshama. Which is again default sensation of the neshama is all in Peri Gimel because this is the neshama. It's not only the neshama has ten spheres. Again, an in, interesting thing in in the Teira Eid, Al Tereb says it is deeper than the end of the day. The neshama is deeper than its ten spheres. But you learn Tanya, the Teira should be Ksav, Teira should be Sachsidus. Now Tereb says clearly the neshama is not just one ball core of energy, <clears throat> but it, it it's it's comprised of the ten spheres. This is the neshama, Chachma of the of the Nisham is the Nisham, is the Nisham, and Bina, and Das, and so on. So when the Chachmah expresses itself, it's only in Elokusa, understandably, in Bina, and Das, and so on, the other is Esfiris. So al Terebit goes there, and therefore the al Terebit, it's, it's literally one line, which repeats also that one line more recently, I think in Perik Memvav, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, it can begin in, in Mem Hay, towards the beginning of Mem Hay, it's a one liner basically. It's in one line rather. But nonetheless, in this one line, Al Terebek kind of uh, encapsulates the entire, gen- generally, the entire Hizbeninus of the Neshama. Memalik Kalamin is one, Sevev Kalamin, and then Kula Kamekelach Hashim. And if you notice over here, Al Terebek doesn't speak about the first two. And he speaks dafka of kula kamekila chashiv, because what brings out the kleis nefesh? What is mm, probable? Or what is the type of isbeninus which establishes this kleis nefesh would lead up, evolve into like clearly bring the neshama to this state, into this experience? Is the kula kamekila chashiv not so much the memalikalam, not so much the mesevim kalam? And it's interesting, these three, it says a number of places, see this, this is the Vahaftas Hashem Lekecha B'chol Lubavcha, and then B'chol Nafshecha, and then B'chol Machal Meidecha. B'chol Meidecha is a quantum leap step, even over B'chol Nafshecha. And so, yet, yet we have to appreciate it. Again, the Alter Rebbe only brings this, so again, in Peri Gimel, and again in Peri Gimel, hey, when he speaks about these banners of the Neshama, and its desire to become one with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, is about the Memalek Kolam in Kiru Chayenu, and then Seva Kolam, which is beyond that, the way the Abish does for himself, by himself, beyond being a creator, beyond being, being involved in Elamis. Seva Kolam, and he transcends Elamis. It's much deeper, deeper dimension with the Kodesh Baruch Hu. And really thinking of that gets a person, can get a person really carried away. That flow of Elokus, a person davens even with Seva Kolam, and it takes him to a total different level. Even with Mamalakalam, for that matter, the Rebbe Shab says that we have to start with the his of Mamalakalam and as the reason why Psuki de Zimra and so on and so forth, which deals with identifying the Nefshad Bahamis, even identifying that every detail within Ilam Haz is associated with Elkus, which is Psuki de Zimra. Then we go to a higher level, which is Shema Yisrael Hashem Lokim Hashem Achod, appreciating the greatness of a Kodesh Baruch the way he's transcendent of being a creator, or transcendent of being a transcendent of being a Malik Kolamin. He himself is greater. He's for himself, by himself, Seva Kolamin. So that itself, the Hafla and Elokus could and does bring a person to to a different different state and a different level. And he's able to connect uh, and to appreciate and to connect in the most deepest level with a Kodesh Baruch just through the Bainanus of Seva Kolamin. Then, then comes Kula Kamekala Hashiv. This is a different type of Isbeinus. This is the reason why the Alter Rebbe from brings this over here, because here you're dealing with some Isbeinus, which is not only going to get bring the Neshama to a level that it loses interest in anything else and just wants to be part of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, but yet it still wants to be. Not that it establishes I want to be, but it doesn't yet cause the total expiration of the body, Klaise Nefesh Mamosh, as opposed to Kula Kamekula Mamosh Hashiv, that does. Because in this, from the perspective of Kula Kamekula Hashiv, meaning to say that the Eibish does Mamosh here, Kaitim Shnibra Ha'olam, Acha Shnibra Ha'olam, we mentioned this a few times, what was here in this very place, this very domain before Hashem created the world, was Hulish Mebavad, the infinity of HaKadosh Baruch 
What is it right now, this year? What is it right now, this moment? Is there a mitzvah of an olam, a world which Hashem brought in, so to say, He removed Himself, allowed to uh, olam to be created, and therefore and He's in charge because He's the only Creator and the only force and the only energy is control of every detail and everything what happens, or we say that atahu olam. It's the same ata from the, Hashem's perspective, Hashem Holy King. It's about you only. There's nothing, no other reality. At all. At all. It's not like Hashem is total in control. Just like Hashem was here before Hashem created the world, so too He's here now. When a person appreciates that, it's really a question. And we mentioned the Baal Shem, the Baal Shem to said after every davening, a person should have been Shagayimu. Because if you re- ex- exercise a real davening, how would you come back? And in this case, when a person really thinks about it very deep, we can at least appreciate why precisely the Kula Kamek Lachashiv would establish this experience of Klesa Nefesh. <clears throat> Even as opposed to the other, he's Beninus, the Malakalam, the Masebakalam. Because there's still a dynamic of Almi and they wish to save it, and therefore it reflects on myself. I, I am, I don't have anything, I don't. Nothing with this passion would cause me to expire completely. Um, but I want to become only be close to Akhach Baruch, especially again, if someone speaks about this, thinks about the Seva Kulam dynamic, that flow of the Lukus. But Kulaka Mekila Hashiv, that everything in the face of Akhach Baruch, it doesn't exist. Kulam Mamish Hashiv, Mamish doesn't exist. As we mentioned this, again, it's important to go back because again, we explain what the Kulaka Mekila Hashiv is. Even over the Mamalakalam Sevlam, and namely this very Zbainus in the third chapter. And we did this in the beginning of Mem a little more brief, but nonetheless, <clears throat> explain this. <clears throat> and they do recall other places in Tanya as well. We spoke about this that the Atu Achalini Brailum, Atu Mishini Brailum, and you could get me a seat in Peri Chof, Chof, uh, Chof. And um, <clears throat> in in Peri uh, Hashem, with, with, uh, where the Alter Rebbe speaks about Hashem or the King, the same same idea in Peri Chof and Gimel, you can see it again. It's all a click away, where the Alter Rebbe brings about this. Uh, so this this type of uh, this idea of Atu Mishni Brayu Matu Atu Hachaleni Brayu Matu Mishni Brayu, and therefore Kula Kamei Kila Chashiv, not Kila Chashiv. He does say Kila, but he Kila Mamash Chashiv. So everything is Akhuz Baruch from the perspective of the Shem, which is a Chelik of the Kamimal. Just wants to be part of a good world. But what happens? What happens to the whole, to the person as a human being, or a healthy, live human being, from the perspective of the Shema? It just wants to completely have that complete um, experience, rapture experience, to Lukus in a way that doesn't, it, nothing matters anymore. It doesn't even pay attention. It's not like a, I don't care to the focus is that I don't want to live or be. It's just close enough. It's just an experience of the sh- neshama similar to Nadav Avihu. Nadav Avihu had this very experience we spoke about last week. You can see in the Eir Chaim also says they had a chashek, a chafetz, a chukav, a nefeshekek, and therefore they wanted to become part of a lakus, and their bodies were just left behind. And so too we mentioned the story of the Altarebbe, but this is the type of love. That it's not I want to be and I want to cleave, but I don't, I, from the perspective of my neshama, I don't want to be. I want to be part of, not I don't want to be, but I want to be part of and the, the, the lukus in a way that everything else doesn't make a difference. That's how much, that's how passionate the, 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 the drive of the neshama. And again, definitely you can see it in, in Pedicure tests. It contributes definitely to this and to to what Delta Rebbe is saying over here. The only thing is, Delta Rebbe is speaking over here, not only from the perspective of the neshama, the, but in the experience of a yid, which is a neshama, again, invested in body, as a healthy human being. Nonetheless, he could, <clears throat> the keli, again, is refined, as we mentioned before, he can experience, the yid can experience this very experience. Tislait, which is, tis, as a result of this, is benenos, and again, in detail with bino, namely the kula kamek lachash mamish lachashiv tislaid v'tislaiv an nefesh that the nefesh will be excited and engulfed in a fiery uh, drive we call it tiferes dulosi to the dearness of the glory of Hashem's greatness leis da kolabi kol de malko and to gaze on the dear the, the, the dearness of the melech of a, of a in this case of Kadosh Baruch Hu kirish be'esh 
the king Kirish Pei Eish shall have his Aza like a fiery flame, an intense fiery flame, Ha'oyle Milo, which ascends on high, and the reason why the flame shoots on high and surges on high is is because, as we mentioned last week, in a bit this week, will be in, in, in earlier, earlier, the reason why it shoots on high because it wants to leave the wick. It wants to leave the, 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 the wood that that it's holding on to. And the eights and the psila, the wood and the wick is holding on to it. And so too, in the experience of the neshama, it wants to part from this wick, wants to part from this wood, which is naturally the body of Shabbat And that would mean total expiry. Expiration of the body. Behind the this strengthen the, the foundation of fire, godly fire, which exists in the Nefshali Keys. The Dalt Rebbe speaks about this in the very chapter Gimel again, which we mentioned. At the Nefshali Keys, there's Aish and the Mayim, just like there's four elements in everything, in every part of Ilmaz. And then Dalt Rebbe in the first chapter speaks about the four elements within the Nefshali Bahamis. And then in Peri Gimel, he also speaks about the element of fire and water. In the Nefshali Keys, and what is the say the Nefshali Keys from the Nefshali Keys is that fervor is passionate love to Hakadosh Baruch Hu, like which is like a flame of fire which surges on high because it wants to leave its wick and it wants to leave its wood that it hold on, hold on to that contains it. And this causes a further step of a thirst into Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Because of Tzom Alochan Nafshi, like David Hamelach says, my soul thirsts for you. And then the next stage, again, this is the way the evolution of it. It has this fiery, passionate <clears throat> drive to Akadosh Baruch And this brings it to a pine, to a thirst, to an inner yearning of the, of the nefesh. Tzom Alochan Nafshi, and the next stage is love becoming love sick to Akadosh Baruch and that would lead to Kleis HaNefesh Mamash, to complete expiration of the soul. Rather, a complete Kleis HaNefesh, in other words, the soul completely becoming part of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Literally, literally. In other words, later the al is going to come back and says, once the person experiences this, it's, it shoots back or it expresses itself ultimately in a 180-degree approach <clears throat> towards Dira Batakhtain because this is a Kodesh Baruch Hu because Dira Batakhtain Hashem having a dwelling place in this world is not something additional to a Kodesh Baruch Hu part of his list he has so many other things part of his list but in the end of the list is you know I'd rather El Mazel look a little bit more refined and more <clears throat> holy and, and express more of my divine spirit and and um, inspiration but no but this and there's so many other things on, on my list, my lachim, my yamailamis, and the ain sof, just the shashuyim of a kodesh baruch I mean, there's so much of a kodesh baruch And at the end of the list, he has, you know, I created this world. I'd rather dira b'tachtei. But the opposite is so true. That who is the eibishter? What is the eibishter? The eibishter is dira b'tachtei, because this is the core and the deepest dimension of a kodesh baruch The etzim of a kodesh baruch the essence of a kodesh baruch wants a dira b'tachtei. So if you want to illustrate Kabiyochal HaKadosh Baruch Hu, is Dira B'tachtein. And therefore, the Al-Tareb is going to say in the end of the day, when a person reaches this level of Kleis nefesh, he kind of becomes part of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, but the call, the immediate call of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, I want a Dira B'tachtein. So the Yid, without even this making a decision, he has that sensation become, because he becomes part of HaKadosh Baruch Hu Mamash, right away he has that immediate sensation to turn back, Shuv, in order to make the Ebesh Tadir B'tachtein. And in what way? Like in ways like he never did before. So is there maybe a, could it be a slip, like a little glitch? Oh, he has Kleis HaNefesh. So therefore, he can, then he can't come back anymore because once the person passes on, he passes on to Tchiyas HaMesi. And it kind of comes up in this Patek. It's miraculous. It doesn't say this word over here, but because he just points out, it, 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 as we could infer from it, it's kind of miraculous that there's no glitch, that there's no second of Kleis HaNefesh. Then, he has to come back because he's, he feels the Hashem, which is Hashem is about Dira and making a dwelling place in this very physical world. That is, that is Hashem is. And again, if you look at Pedic and Vav and Tani, this is a greater dimension. This is a, the real core of HaKadosh Baruch Hu because everything else is a Yeridida, the whole Atzilus, Bria, the, the, the 
grand godly worlds, even at Silas, which is where Yigur Chorra, there's no evil, this is all about the Lukus, is a Yerida, there's a great descent, a degradation, degradation of the Kodesh Baruch Hu, as opposed to Dirba Tukhtayn in this physical world, that who is Hashem, that's the core of Kodesh Baruch Hu. So you think about it, that if you really could infer that it's a miracle that there is no split second that the person expires, because then how can he come alive and go further? So it's kind of on the moment he has, he says, Bo li dei klesa nefesh. But in the end of the day, it's a virtual klesa nefesh, just because of the reason that he's touching the divine, and the divine, he feels the call of the divine to dafka come back down and make the Hashem dir But in, in an idea that from the person's perspective, at that moment, Bo li dei klesa nefesh, a complete consumption of the soul. Mamosh. Like it says, Gam kol sa nafshi. The Davin Amel says, not only tzamol cha nafshi. The Davin Amel says, kol sa nafshi, a complete consumption of the soul into a lakus. Dr. Rebbe says, vehine mikan yotzah sheir shalavim lamata. This is where the source of the levim come down lamata. What was the service of the levim? <laughs> Skip the brackets a moment. Davide shalavim ayla harim kelerina b'tayid b'shir b'zim rabinigam b'diima b'mchinas rotzi b'shuv. The Nuvim were about song, while the Kainim did the Aveda, the Nuvim were about song. The Lashon of the Rebbe is trying to translate to Lahorim Kelerina, to uh, elevate a, a voice of song, Betaida, and, <clears throat> and, and thanks, recognition, Beshira Bezimra, with, again, two expressions of song, cantation, Benigun, again, Precisely, not only stam etayda, but dafka shira vezimra with with an actual song. Oneim oneima, and in the song, like in every song, if it's a true, uh, if it's a true song, it is a song which runs deep in the soul and touches the deep strands in the person's soul. You see, it, you feel a sweetness. For that matter, we don't even prior to speaking about the levim, we know that a song brings about a certain transcendency within the experience of the person he does this and that certain thing makes him makes him more difficult and and and, 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 and anxious and so on certain things make them more calm and certain things make them happy and so on a song brings a person to a different level when a person rehears a real song if it's an Egan Simcha or an Egan Mamiris it takes the person out of the, the, the normal confinement of life and brings them to a different level because that's the magical that's what's so magical of song fortune. And again, it doesn't exist in Yiddish guy. Bichlol is a song and brings a person into a different spirit, into a different domain. And this is again, when you speak with Abedus HaLavim, which you can appreciate that Abedus HaLavim, the Levim doing the the, 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 the Aveda, the Mikdosh, in the Besam Mikdosh, their song wasn't Stama song, a combination of a few words and a few drums like we, let's say unfortunate, but many of the songs today kind of are so shallow. Even in talking about in the Jewish world, I'm going to talk about something chas v'shalom, other other songs in the other. This is mamish something which uh, the the not only the tune, the message is something which is not aligned with Yiddishkeit bechlal. And to the contrary, we're talking about even song within the the thrum, if you will. It's sometimes it's it's very it's shallow. You don't get the message. So okay, what's this all about? Because it's just on the onset. It's a bunch of drums and a lot of noise and so on. And, and not trying to be negative at all over here. It's just we're just kind of trying to point, understand that not every song is brings about this experience of transcendency. You're talking about a real deep song, a deep a, a song with a lot of meaning, or, or 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 a song which runs deep within the soul. And this is again not necessarily common, but there are and there exist, and not necessarily even associated with the Veda Salavim. There exists deep deep uh, songs would make a difference. And again. Uh, songs of reflection, which draw rather causes a reflection or introspection or simcha or joy or ecstasy and so on. The Davidus Alavi, that you can imagine the song of the Levim, this is where the archetype type of songs and Nigunim, real Nigunim, which entered straight into the soul and elevated the Levi, and so everybody is around the Levim singing the Kayanim and whoever else was around and heard it to a different level. So here he speaks about the Aved of the Levi, which had that Rotsui, because that's what the Levi stands for. As we know, Kain is Isha Chesed, Levi associated with Gvur, and that's the beginning of the Alter Rebbe, this, this, this Tanya, this Pedic, that the Alter Rebbe says, till now we were speaking about the Av associated with Kain Isha Chesed, 
the line of Chesed, Kesav HaKadosh HaKadosh. And here we're dealing with Gvura, which is Zoho, Gvura Siliyen, is the Bine Lo, which is again the source of Gvura, Bago. So in Aveda, this is the Aveda of the Levi, which is, brings around that Rotsi, the song was supposed to bring that experience of Rotsi, the drive to HaKadosh Baruch In what way? Or if one hooked on, if the Levi himself was part of the experience, or one hooked on to that that experience of the song of the Levi was something which he was able to experience all these different levels of tzim, of, tzim, of, of, of the passionate fiery love to Kodesh Baruch the tzimoyin, the thirst the loves being coming lovesick and to, total kleis nefesh this was the experience, this was the Avedah of the Levi which came from the Gvur and therefore their Avedah was about singing, not necessarily doing the Avedah. Now, the Altar also says, which is Shuv. Eventually it'll be Shuv as well, Ratsi and Shuv. So the beginning of the Altar said, that's what a song is. In a song you have Ratsi, and then you have Shuv. Different stances of the song, naturally. But later the Altar is going to say that in the Avedah of in the end there is Shuv again, which is the final message, which we alluded a few times until we get there even. But no question here, the Alter Rebbe is not speaking so much about the Shuv, he's speaking about the Ratz of Shuv, which exists again, the experience of any Nigan, particularly a Nigan associated with the, 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 the Levi. Shiv Chedis Abba Azo, Kishal Heves, Eitz Mina Bozo, Kedis Bikimor, Perigam, and Perig Beit Chagigo. This is a, 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 a intense love, like a flame coming out of the Bozok. Bozok is the um, like the refinery of metal or wood or gold or so on. And this is, the, you can imagine the, the heat, so you see the Shalhevis shoots out from the Bozok. And this is similar to the Neshama, experiencing that based on song and, and um, elevation of the Nefesh to the degrees that he mentions over here. That was the Avedis Alevi. Baba Dalevi, who it's explained in a number of places in Chassidus, <clears throat> but again, it's based on this idea that the Levi had a shaykhist to this Aviv more than the Kayani. Now, we're going to go back to the brackets of Rosh Hashem this coming week, as Al-Tareb says, if that's the case. So the Kayani, the Levim, their Avedah should be far superior to the Kayani. If you look in the simple the wording of the Teira, and the message of the Teira, the Kayani are the ones that do the Avedah, the Levim, they come to a service to the Kayani. But here, from this chapter, seems the opposite, that the Kayanim, as the Levim, stand far superior to the Kayanim. So that today, he's going to say, that even the Rizal, but he brings from the Rizal that today's Levim are going to eventually be born into families of Kayanim. We're going to speak about this, Bez Hashem, this coming week, and we will go on again with a message, and then what this, this idea of how it ultimately reflects, kind of in a 180 degree, just the opposite of Klesa Nefesh, and Dafka to be in the, the message, the ultimate message of the Altarebbe, this Pedic, that the whole approach to Shuv, to appreciating the Dira B'tachtenim, and the drive to it, making the Ebeshter Dira B'tachtenim, because of this Klesa Nefesh, takes a new, a new dimension within the experience of the Neshama, and the person naturally has the greatest desire and aspiration to put into action, to make the Hashem ultimately a true Dira B'tachtenim, as well as Hashem. See how this unfolds. Have a wonderful night.